Iqaluits is the largest city and territorial capital of the Canadian territory of Nunavut. Formerly Frobisher Bay until 1987, after the name of the bay on whose shore it is sited. Iqaluit is located on the south coast of Baffin Island at the head of Frobisher Bay. As of the 2011 census the population was 6,699, an increase of 8.3% from the 2006 census. It has the lowest population of any capital city in Canada. Inhabitants of Iqaluit are called Iqalumrut. History Iqaluit was founded in 1942 as an American air base, intended to provide a stopover and refueling site for short-range aircraft being ferried across the Atlantic to support the war effort in Europe. Iqaluit's first permanent inhabitant was Nekazuk, an Inuk guide who helped American Air Force planners to choose a site with a large flat area suitable for a landing strip. The wartime airstrip was known as Crystal II and was part of the Crimson Route. Long regarded as a campsite and fishing spot by the Inuit, the place chosen had traditionally been named Iqaluit a Euro place of many fish in Inuktitut a Euro, but Canadian and American authorities named it Frobisher Bay, after the name of the body of water it abuts. For the history of the air base, see Frobisher Bay Air Base. The Hudson's Bay Company moved its South Baffin operations to the neighboring valley of Nyakunut, officially called Apex in 1949 to take advantage of the airfield. The population of Frobisher Bay increased rapidly during the construction of the distant early warning line, in the mid-1950s. Hundreds of construction workers, military personnel, and administrative staff moved into the community, and several hundred Inuit followed to take advantage of the access to medical care and jobs the base provided. In 1957, 489 of the town's 1,200 residents were reported to be Inuit. After 1959, the Canadian government established permanent services at Frobisher Bay, including full-time doctors, a school and social services. The Inuit population grew rapidly in response, as the government encouraged Inuit to settle permanently in communities with government services. Naval radio station Frobisher Bay, call sign CFI was established in July 1954 as a result of the closure of NRS Chimo, Quebec. Station CFI was part of the supplementary radio network. In its simplest form, a Suprad station operated in the following manner. When a prospective target made an emission which was heard by the control center, control flashed the details of the emission to the Suprad stations of the network. The stations tuned the signal, took bearings then reported the bearing to control. At control, the bearings were collated by computer and a fix area established. Because of its remoteness and size, it was very expensive to operate. Advancing technology eventually forced the closure of CFI in 1967. The American military left Iqaluit in 1963, as intercontinental ballistic missiles diminished the strategic value of the Dewline and Arctic air bases, but Frobisher Bay remained the government's administrative and logistical center for much of the eastern Arctic. In 1964, the first elections were held for a community council, and in 1979 for the first mayor. The founding of the Gordon Robertson Educational Center, now in Uxuk High School, in the early 1970s at Iqaluit confirmed the government's commitment to the community as an administrative center. At the time of his founding, it was the sole high school operating in more than one-seventh of Canadian territory. On January 1, 1987, the name of this municipality was officially changed from Frobisher Bay to Iqaluit aligning official usage with the name that the Inuit population had always used. In December 1995, Iqaluit was selected to serve as Nunavut's future capital in a territory-wide referendum, in which it was chosen over Rankin Inlet. On April 19, 2001, it was officially redesignated as a city. Iqaluit was designated by Canada as the host city for the 2010 meeting of the G7 finance ministers, held on 5 Euro February 6. The meeting strained the northern communications technology infrastructure. Timeline 1576, Englishman Martin Frobisher sails into Frobisher Bay believing he has found the route to China. First Anglican Episcopalian Church Service in North America, 1861, Charles Francis Hall, an American, 
camps at the Sylvia Grinnell River and explores the waters of Cujas Inlet, which he names after his Inuit guide. 1942, U.S. Army Air Forces selects Ikaluta Euro unregistered trademark S current location as the site of a major air base. 1949, the HBC moves its trading post from Ward Inlet to Apex. 1955, Frobisher Bay becomes the center for U.S. Canada dew line construction operations. 1958, telephone exchange service established by Bell Canada. 1963, U.S. military move out of Ikaluta. 1964, first community council formed. Population of Frobisher Bay is 900. 1970, Frobisher Bay officially recognized as a settlement. 1974, Settlement of Frobisher Bay gains village status. 1976, Inuit present the Nunavut proposal to the federal government. 1979, first mayor elected. 1980, Frobisher Bay designated as a town. 1982, Government of Canada agrees in principle to the creation of Nunavut. 1987, Frobisher Bay officially becomes Ikalut, reverting to its original Inuktitut name meaning place of fish. 1993, the Nunavut Land Claims Agreement is signed in Ikalut, 1995, Nunavut. Residents select Ikalut as capital of the new territory, April 1, 1999, the territory of Nunavut officially comes into being, April 19, 2001, Ikalut receives its order of official status as a city, 2002, Ikalut, along with Nuuk, Greenland, co-host the first jointly hosted Arctic Winter Games. The Arctic Winter Games Arena was constructed in Ikalut for the event. February 5, 2010, Ikalut hosted the finance meeting as part of the 2010 G7 Summit. Geography Ikalut is located in the Everett Mountains rising from Kujis Inlet, an inlet of Frobisher Bay, on the southeast part of Baffin Island. It is well to the east of Nunavut's mainland, and northeast of Hudson Bay. Suburbs Apex is a small community about 5 km southeast from Ikalut's center and is known in Inuktitut as Nyakunut. It is located on a small peninsula separating Kujis Inlet from Tar Inlet. There is a women's shelter, a church, a store, a primary school, a design shop and a bed and breakfast. Historically Apex was the place where most Inuit lived when Ikalut was a military site, and as such it was off limits to anyone not working at the base. Climate, Ikalut is a typically Arctic climate, although it is well outside the Arctic Circle. The city has cold winters and short summers that are too cool to permit the growth of trees. Although it is north of the tree line there are still shrubs that are classed, locally, as trees. These include the Arctic willow which is hard to recognize as a tree because of its low height. The permafrost does not allow the taproot to get deeper than sixer in so this does not allow vertical growth. The arctic willow may be up to around 25 aft horizontally, but only 6 a and tall. Average monthly temperatures are below freezing for 8 months of the year. Ikalut averages just over 400 mm of precipitation annually, much wetter than many other localities in the Canadian Arctic archipelago, with the summer being the wettest season. Snowstorms and blizzards, the city of Ikalut experiences some destructive winter storms during the winter season. A notable blizzard indirectly hit Ikalut in early February 2007, with wind gusts up to 130 km per hour. Demographics The 2011 census reported that there were 6,699 people living in Ikalut, an 8.3% increase from 2006. The land area size of the city is 52.50 km2. Therefore a population density of 127.6 people per km2. Ikalut has a total of 2,930 private dwellings, 2,367 of which are occupied by usual residents. The median value of these dwellings is $376,639, quite a bit higher than the national median at $280,552. The average household has about 2.8 people living in it, and the average family has 1.4 children living at home with them. The median household income in Ikalut is quite high, $98,921, almost double the national rate at $54,089.
the median income for an individual in the city, is also high, $60,688. 5.9% of people are either divorced or separated, which is quite a bit lower than the national rate at 8.6%. Also, 53.3% of the population is either married or living with a common law partner. Equally it is quite a young population, the median age of the population is more than 10 years younger than the national rate, 30.1 years old compared to 40.6 years old. Equally it is the highest number of Inuit people in both numbers and percentages, of all Canadian cities with populations greater than 5,000. The racial makeup is there is no majority mother tongue in Iqaluit, as 45.4% reported their mother tongue as being English, and 45.4% also reported their mother tongue as an Uktitut. However 97.2% of Iqalamiwits can speak English, whereas only 53.1% can speak an Uktitut. French was the mother tongue of 4.8% of the population, which is the same figure of the population who can speak the language. As of 2012, Paravik, Ikaluta Euro Unregistered Trademark S in Uktitut Language Training Center, has a new goal, to train instructors from Nunavut communities to teach in Uktitut in different ways and in their own dialects when they return home. 74.9% of the population practice some form of Christianity, and 22.9% of the population identify as having no religious affiliation. There are other religions practiced in the city just not in large numbers. For those over the age of 25, 75.7% .7 are high school educated, 59.8% are post-secondary school educated, 24.3% have no certificate, diploma or degree, notable Ikalumat, transportation. Equally it is the distinction of being the smallest Canadian capital in terms of population and the only capital that is not connected to other settlements by a highway. Located on an island remote from the Canadian highway system, Iqaluit is generally only accessible by aircraft and, subject to ice conditions, by boat. Iqaluit Airport is a fully modern facility whose originally Second World War era runway is more than long enough for most classes of modern jet. Plans are underway to build a new, larger passenger terminal building north of the current terminal, which would also include a larger apron adjacent to the new terminal. A persistent rumor that Iqaluit was an emergency landing site for the Space Shuttle is false. Iqaluit shared its runway with the Royal Canadian Air Force until the Canadian forces stopped using Iqaluit as a forward operating location. The barracks and F-18 hangars are maintained. Iqaluit Airport was a center for cold weather testing of new aircraft, such as the Airbus A380 in February 2006. Both Canadian North and First Air serve Iqaluit from Ottawa and Yellowknife as well as multiple communities in Nunavut. Air Canada Jazz also provided daily service to Iqaluit from Ottawa between March 28, 2010 and July 31, 2011. CBC reports the Air Canada service was cancelled due to rising fuel costs, among other issues, which prevented the route from being profitable. Locally based airlines include Air Nunavut. Canadian Helicopters, Nunasi Helicopters and Arnalik Aviation. All provide air charters and Air Nunavut and Kivalik Air provide Medivac Air Ambulance service. In the middle of summer, a few ships a Euro generally no larger than a Liberty-class vessel a Euro transport bulk and heavy goods to the city. Cargo is offloaded onto barges as the harbour is not deep enough. The city is currently planning a deep water port. Experienced locals also cross the Hudson Strait from the Canadian mainland when it freezes over either on foot or by dog sled or snowmobile, a distance of over 100 km. Iqaluit has a local road system only stretching from the nearby community of Apex to the Sylvia Grinnell Territorial Park Reserve, 1 km west of town. Iqaluit currently has no public transportation, although there is citywide taxi service. Motor cars are increasing in number to the extent of causing occasional traffic jams known locally as the rush minute. However, the cost of shipping automobiles and the wear and tear of the harsh Arctic climate combined with its notoriously rough roadways mean that snowmobiles remain the preferred form of personal transportation. All-terrain vehicles are also increasingly common in most of the Canadian Arctic. 
snowmobiles are used to travel both within the city and in the surrounding area. In winter, dog sleds are still used, but primarily for recreation. In winter, the nearby Komomavit Territorial Historic Park and the more remote Katanalik Territorial Park Reserve are only accessible by snowmobile, dog sled or foot. In the summer, both are accessible by boat. Both residents and businesses identify their locations mostly by building number, and occasionally by the name of a prominent structure. Residents know where in the city certain series of building numbers are located. Numbers tend to be aggregated in blocks, so someone might say that they live in the 2600s. Around 2003, street names were developed, although there were delays in finalizing them and posting the signs. Street numbers have not been assigned, and building numbers continue to be used. Equally it is the only Canadian capital city not to have traffic signals. Roads, most major roads in Iqaluit are paved with asphalt, but local and smaller roads are gravel. Roads do not have traffic signals, but use stop signs to control intersections. Education, there are seven schools located in Iqaluit, six public and one French. At the post-secondary level there are two, Nunavut Arctic College and Akitsa Rec Law School. Infrastructure, waste and water treatment, the city's infrastructure is stressed by growth and lack of means to upgrade. Waste from the city is disposed off into an open-air dump on Akilic Drive located south of the city. While the city has water treatment facilities, raw sewage from the city is often dumped untreated into nearby Frobisher Bay. As the dump has reached capacity, the city is planning to open a second dump nine kilometers north of the city. Ecolute does not have a recycling program in place with all recyclable materials sent into the waste stream. Emergency services. Emergency services are provided by city from a single station on Nakhunkuziarayak. The emergency services fleet consists of, Engine 1 a Euro Spartan Diamond Smeal Pumper, Ladder 1 a Euro Spartan Metro Star Smeal 75 feet aerial, Command 1, Ford SUV, Command 2 a Euro Ford F 254A, 4 pickup, Medic 1 and 2 a Euro Ford F 450 Type 2 ambulances, Eclute Airport Emergency Services is responsible for fire services at the airport. Following a fire at the airport in 1998, the government of Nunavut reopened the fire station at the airport. Their fleet consists of, Walt C-5500 ARFF, Oshkosh T-3000 ARFF, policing and Ecolute, as with the rest of Nunavut is contracted to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police B Division. Architecture and Attractions Much of Ecolute's architecture is functional a Euro designed to minimize material costs, while retaining heat and withstanding the climate. Early architecture runs from the 1950s military barracks of the original Duline installation, through the 1970s white hypermodernist fiberglass block of the Nekazook School and Municipal Offices and Arena, to the lines of the steel reinforced concrete high rise complex on the hill above it. A number of older Hudson's Bay Company and early 1950s buildings have been retained and restored in apex. The newer buildings are more colorful and diverse and closer to the norms of Southern architecture. The principal exception is the Nunavut Legislative Assembly Building, which is remarkable for its colorful interior, adorned with some of the very best in Inuit art. A new legislative building is in planning to be developed and built outside the city on the Apex Road. Another distinctive building was St. Jude's Anglican Cathedral, see of the Anglican Diocese of the Arctic, which was a white building shaped like an igloo. Originally built by the parishioners, under the guidance of Marcusi Peter, a traditional master carpenter, the altar was shaped like a traditional Inuit sled, and the cross composed of two cross nowel tusks. An incident of arson severely affected the cathedral structure and interior on November 5, 2005, and it was finally demolished on June 1, 2006. The cathedral is slowly being rebuilt and fundraising continues locally and internationally. As of December 2010, the exterior of a similarly shaped replacement cathedral had been completed, and interior work was planned for 2011 with a potential opening for Christmas 2011. On a ridge overlooking the city is the distinctive blue and white Inuksuk High School. The school is made up of four square sections joined together that give a clover leaf shape when viewed from the air. 
The city is also the location of the Nanata Sunakatangit Museum, which houses a large collection of Inuit and Arctic objects. The museum is housed in a restored and extended Hudson's Bay Company building, clad in the HBC signature red and white, transported to Iqaluit from its original site on the Apex Beach. Just west of Iqaluit is the Sylvia Grinnell Territorial Park Reserve. This park is dominated by the valley of the Sylvia Grinnell River. A small visitor's center with viewing platform is located on top of a hill overlooking scenic waterfalls, tidal flats and traditional fishing sites. Nearby on an island near Peterhead Inlet, is the Colmavirt Territorial Historic Park. It is a site with a long Inuit history and numerous artifacts have been recovered, including the remains of eleven semi-buried sod houses. A little farther, across Frobisher Bay, are the Katanalik Territorial Park Reserve and the Sopa Heritage River Park forming a park corridor linking Iqaluit along traditional overland travel routes with Kamarut. Frobisher Bay extends for almost 70 miles to the east, with moderate hills, glaciers and traditional and summer campsites, opening into the Davis Straits which divide Nunavut from Greenland. Iqaluit, like many Nunavut communities has a volunteer-run annual spring festival. Called Tunic Time it involves a combination of traditional Inuit activities combined with more modern events, while the Alienate Music and Arts Festival is held for a week each June 21. Media, Radio, Television, Channel 10, CH4161, APTN, Channel 12, CH2260, Radio Canada, Ecolute was previously served by CFFB TV Channel 8, a CBC television slash CBC North repeater of CFYKDT Yellowknife. That station closed down on July 31, 2012 due to budget cuts affecting the CBC. Communications, MeshNet Community WiFi, Free Community WiFi and paid service available in most areas of city. Free services include access to Assumer TV, and many other resources. Press, Nunatsiak News, News North, References. Further reading. External links, City of Ecolute.